Welcome to this 2021 virtual high-tech session about transitioning plate. This is the story of our journey to sustainability for our National Science Foundation funded Advanced Technological Education Regional Center for Manufacturing in Florida. My name is Marilyn Barger. I served as the PI and Executive Director of Plate. My colleague, Dr. Richard Gilbert, Professor of Chemical Engineering at the University of South Florida, served as Plate's co-PI since its inception. A little history about Plate. We started our center with an idea in 2002 that we were funded for in the planning grant from NSF ATE. That small grant helped us provide a plan for the regional center. In 2004, we were fully funded as a regional center for advanced manufacturing in the state of Florida. We were refunded again in 2008 and 2012. And when realizing that we would not be refunded as a center again, we began to use some supplemental funding and no cost extensions to continue our work. In the meantime, we had discovered, we've been looking for a partner to sustain our work. In 2016, we signed an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with Florida Makes, specifically for outreach and manufacturing day and month. That worked out well, and we continued doing partnership projects for the next four years with more and more intensity in more and more aspects of our work. And then last year in June, we closed our NSF ATE Center, the funding ran out. And the very next day, that was June 18th, 2020, we became part of the Florida Makes Network and now operate under their umbrella. A couple months later in September, we, Florida Makes received some funding from the Florida Department of Education specifically to support plates. So how did we get from here to there? Or from there to here? We started not really focusing on sustainability in the early 2000s. We did some lip service to the idea. We talked to our visiting committee as well. We thought maybe the college would adopt us and to help us carry out our work. Um, just kind of put it off to the side until about 2014. When we finally got focused on sustainability, we began um, trying to find a way to sustain either our whole organization or particular projects and programs that we had developed that were, had been successful and helpful for educators in the state. So we developed this grid sustainability worksheet and used it as a way to track our, our um, work towards sustainability and sustaining different parts of our project. So we identified for each um, activity or each program, we identified some partners who might take them over. We also identified some activities and programs that looked to be impossible to sustain and we just left them at that and focused our energy on those that could be sustained. Um, we reviewed this worksheet regularly. We updating the potential partners and the activities um, also noting the status of each of these partnerships and making some general notes about that. So here's just a sample of the grid, the big format with the empty boxes. On this slide, you'll see some of the outreach activities that Plate engaged in. We had an awards program for manufacturing educators. We awarded um, recognition to secondary and post-secondary educators uh, every year. And we're looking for partners for that. We tried to identify the role, maybe there'd be two partners, uh, what kind of progress we had as this was a dated worksheet and we just continued to review it. And then just a place for comments. Um, the next one, the website, the Maine Florida website, 
with its resources. We didn't see anyone who would maintain that for the even the short term. So we just kind of left that one aside for the meantime and didn't focus on finding someone to take that on. And so on and so forth. Um, the summer robotics camps at the college, we transitioned to the college leadership itself and they have now continued to do the robotics camps as have a number of other institutions around the state, which is the last row in this slide. The worksheet items we just reviewed are driven by Flate's mission to build a world-class manufacturing technician workforce to help maximize Florida's manufacturing global competitiveness. Our NSF ATE Center of Excellence resources are focused on the building of the engineering technology degree in the Florida State College system. They are not directed to interact with manufacturers and their technician workforce in their facilities. Florida makes uses its resources directly in manufacturing facilities statewide to impact quality and operation performance in Florida manufacturing. A partnership would extend and strengthen both organizations' impact on Florida manufacturing. Our one step at a time approach to this partnership began with the memo of understanding. The other items in progress which are shown in the slide and culminate with the plate receiving a NSF award that was being with Florida makes the physical agent. Florida Makes is a statewide industry-led public-private partnership operated by an alliance of Florida regional manufacturing associations with the mission to improve Florida manufacturing competitiveness, productivity, and technological performance. Plate is part of Florida Makes and Florida Makes has resources from Florida manufacturers, the state of Florida, the Federal Government Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program. Modeled after the United States Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Extension Program, the United States Department of Commerce established the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, the MEP, at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in 1988. As the MEP National Network member in Florida, Florida makes uses MEP resources to focus on small and medium manufacturers to provide expertise and resources to meet their needs and improve their productivity and technological performance. The core services for Florida Makes are directed to manufacturers and they focus on growth, technology, and talent. Service categories include those listed on the slide. The one immediately important to us is the Workforce Training Development Unit. That particular function is working with the manufacturers and how to improve their workforce. Our part will be to extend that and unite that work with the work that's being done in the state colleges. The extra bonus of being part of Florida Makes is there are other elements of Florida Makes its mission, business growth services and technology acceleration that will blend nicely into the workforce element. We expect to be able to integrate some of Florida Makes activities into the colleges using the expertise of the faculty in the colleges. This will be particularly important 
with the acceleration of technology that is caused by industry 4.0 apparatus. Florida Makes has an interesting organizational setup. They are a network of regional associations for manufacturing around the state. There are 14 of those associations at this time, and they cover most of the territory geographically in the state. Those organizations have continued their traditional role to advocate for manufacturing um, in the state legislature. They're a channel to bring resources to manufacturers. And now Florida Makes is a source of some of those resources. And they are there to share best practices among the manufacturers. So here's a map of, of Florida with all of the regional associations outlined in a different color. And so there they are. They service the manufacturers in their regions. And if you know Florida's geography, you would realize that they have um, they have very different focuses from place to place, from region to region for the kinds of manufacturing that is done in that area. So for example, on the Space Coast, there's a lot of space-related technologies in play, um, some high-tech technologies and processes that need special attention and special workforces. You can overlay on this map the location of the Florida college system. There's 28 colleges in Florida, state colleges in Florida, and they are scattered across the state. Over 20 of them support programs that support manufacturers and produce manufacturing technicians. So this is a good map between the two organizations, good opportunity for the college programs to integrate and work directly with manufacturers that they may not be connected to. So in, in kind of summary, we were two separate organizations, both focused on advanced manufacturing and optimizing it in our state. We developed a strong partnership and eventually we merged our efforts. Um, some of the issues that were tied together and worked very closely together with are our education and training programs, we have a lot of subject matter expertise, both in the colleges and in manufacturers for new technologies, uh, career pathways and stackable credentials, very important for the manufacturing workforce and for our employees. Um, and of course, it's very important to promote the industry and the great careers it has for, for students and our community at large. It's also important especially in the post-pandemic days now that we really look at integrating industry 4.0 technologies into both the colleges and the manufacturers. So our new um, home at Florida Makes has a lot of benefits for us. Although we still have our plate mission to support manufacturing education in the state at the technician level. Um, the, the benefit, there's other benefits that are, have made this transition really a good thing for our organization. Um, long, obviously the long-term funding to support our work as part of the Florida manufacturing ecosystem is a, is a great benefit. Uh, there's an established network of manufacturers through the regional associations that we can connect with colleges that they're not connected to already. Uh, there's a high, we have higher level access to the Florida Department of Education and other state agencies. And we had um, as an NSF funded center, we have access to large statewide public private entities, including various economic development organizations. We have much more statewide visibility to all manufacturing stakeholders. And we do get to continue our, our mission as it complements the work of Florida Makes. We do see a lot of opportunities for growth and expansion 
that carry us beyond the scope of the NSF ATE program under the National Science Foundation. So we're looking forward to that as we get settled in our new home. I'd like to end with some transitioning tips, as I call them, thinking about sustainability for your projects and your centers that are funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, well, the first suggestion is to talk about how to sustain your center or project regularly or how to sustain parts of it. Where, where can you pigeonhole some different activities and programs and start thinking about all of that um, early on as you get going. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket and develop some alternatives. So some centers have successfully formed not-for-profit organizations. Um, we were adopted by another organization. There's ways to um, get some of your projects adopted or, or taken over by some organizations in a more piecemeal kind of way. So don't overlook all kinds of opportunities. Just find ways to sustain the great work that you're doing for under NSF. So be sure that the organizations that you look at um, have a mission that overlap yours. Um, build relationships, that's part of the starting early. Uh, be sure to tell them what's in it for you and what's in it for them. How is it going to be better when you're together? Engage in partnership activities and projects to kind of test the waters. Share kudos for good work. Promote them whenever it's appropriate, even if they're not part of a particular program. And early on, start defining a shared vision so you know you're going down the same track. So with that, we'll say um, thank you for listening. And you can send any questions uh, to me or to Dr. Gilbert. His contact was on the first slide and go back and catch it there. And again, thank you. We hope you enjoy the high-tech conference.